Hi there all, I'd just like to say before we get started that I am not claiming that this is the definitive Reiki technique, right? There are many ways to heal people with the hands and many Reiki techniques out there. This is just one technique though that I learned by way of an actual projection. So I hope you'll enjoy and I hope you can take something from it in order to make your practices a little bit better, if not a lot better. Enjoy. Good morning, it's me again, Ryan JC, Ryan James Cropper. I hope you're having a pleasant day wherever you are in the world. Uh, I was having a very interesting afternoon. About four days ago, I left my body and I encountered a being that accidentally taught me how to do Reiki. <laughs> and I've been doing the Reiki for about two days now and I've noticed that the burn on my chest hasn't been hurting. I've been feeling consistent pain for the past three years, give or take, and this was the first time that I felt nothing. And so this kind of left me speechless, and I wanted to teach you as to how to do it too, as well as mention the experience that led me to learn this technique. But first I needed to do it for a few days just to figure out the mechanics of it all, just to figure out how to put it all into words. You know? And I feel confident enough to do that. I feel like I could tell you how to do it and you would just get it. So bear with me. This is what happened. So I've been heavily into astral projection for the past month. I've been doing it a lot. Of course, I've been doing it my entire life, but I got bored at one point. I recently sparked my own curiosity again and <laughs> I found myself astral projecting more often than not, at least three to four times a week. And so four days ago, I'm in bed and I'm just laying there. I've done a few rounds, you know, I've popped out of my body, I've come back, thought about what I just experienced, then I popped out again, I did some meditations in the astral plane. I just observed, this is what I mean by meditations, I observed the environment and its relationship to my thoughts and my being there. I was doing that a few times. And I found myself bouncing back to my physical body and I'm laying there and I'm assessing everything that I've recently discovered. And whilst I'm in my bed, I notice this bluish pink being, female in nature, walk up beside my bed and place her hand on my belly. So her hand is on my belly and she just decides to fill it with love. My stomach starts to protrude out and it feels like I've got a, a small pineapple of just pure love. And love, what I mean by that word is, I just felt like everything was okay. And that not only was I taken care of, but she decided to make me feel good for the sake of making me feel good. You know, like this feeling that I'm putting in your belly just feels pleasant, enjoy it. And so once she removed her hand, I opened my eyes here and I realized that my belly was also protruded out here and I could still feel that, that pineapple of love in my stomach. And while she was doing this, our minds connected to the point where I felt like her and she felt like me. I'm assuming she also felt this bond. I can only say that I did on my end. I felt like I was her. And in that moment, it was like a security leak. I understood what she was doing as well as how she was doing it on top of the information regarding Reiki. Okay, and I'll make more sense in a second as I break down piece by piece the practice, all right? About a day later, I noticed that I was still feeling this pineapple. It's kind of like it was a baby <laughs> inside of my belly, you know? And then I got to work on trying to put to work the information that I had kind of received from her mind. So Reiki, let's describe it from her perspective, all right? You have energetical bodies. I'm sure you know of this already. If you don't, this is what I mean by energy bodies. You have the cathartic body, the etheric body, the emotional body, and the astral body, and even the mental body, right? Uh, what makes these energy bodies is that they're comprised of energy. 
they're not physical like your physical anatomy. And on top of this, they could all be classed under the, the name subtle energy, or in other words, subtle bodies. They're subtle because, you know, the emotional body is often quite subtle, unless you're really angry or really happy. The astral body is very, very subtle in that in order for you to activate it, you need to calm yourself down and unlock subtleties within your astral body so that it can then affect your physical anatomy, allowing you to achieve an astral projection. Yeah. Uh, your cathartic body is subtle. It's basically the information, the underlining information behind the cells that allow you to take on this shape and form. In other words, your genetic blueprint. Okay. That's really close next to the etheric body. The etheric body is more of a thought form body. Whenever you're thinking about somebody, this etheric body can send information out there throughout the ethers and make contact with that person that you're thinking about in many different ways. And of course, the astral body, you're sliding out of the physical body. It's used as a vehicle to travel throughout time and space. But the astral body, this subtle body, is also known as a dream body. In that when you're sleeping, your dream is literally created out of your astral body, the energy used to create your astral form. If you get really good, you can come from a lucid dream and actually notice the dream disassimilating itself and turning itself back into your astral body. Your awareness switches from being inwardly focused to outwardly focused and now you're in the astral plane. Okay, and you can do the opposite too. You can turn your astral body from the astral plane into a dream and you can sink into it. This is very important because it means that if your astral body can create an entire environment, that means that there is no part of your astral body that can't take on the form of something, which is very important when it comes to Reiki and the physical hand. Right? The physical hand, it has specific centers. And when they're activated, what it does is, is it allows the subtle body, or in other words, the astral body, to become activated in a very, very intense way. And when it's activated, your astral body can actually leak out of the physical body and make its way into the other regions of your astral body. Now, your astral body is right next to your cathartic body. And so, I'll reiterate this as well so it makes more sense in a second. I'll go through how to do it step by step. And so, if you take, for example, your physical hand, you feel your astral hand, so you have to have some knowledge of astral projection here, and you place it over, I have a burn on my chest, I put it over that, and then I shift my astral body into a different form, simply by using my imagination, which everyone does already, if I just imagine and will my hand to become something else other than my hand, let's say healing energy, or let's say I'm imagining it glowing green, or let's say I get more direct, and I imagine it being new skin, you know, new tissue for which my body to use to heal. What's happening there is, is that signal that I'm creating, that, that energetic imagery, changing my astral hand into a thought form and placing it over my chest, is making contact with the chest of my astral body. And because it's right next to the cathartic body, the genetic template of my anatomy, the astral body will then influence my cathartic body into changing how my chest has been structured whilst healing this injury. Okay, So I'm changing the information behind the cell using my astral body. And so the, the way I would do this, of course, is I would sit there in my bed. And if you're not good at astral projection, if you have no experience with it, it's fine. You don't have to. I've noticed a lot of people figure this out by themselves or by looking at a video online and they still have a similar effect. Of course, if you know how to astral project and change your form in the astral plane, it's gonna help dramatically because then you know for a fact that you're doing it correctly. It's more refined. You're able to pick up on specific happenings that are happening to your subtle bodies as well as the reaction from your physical body in relation to what you're doing to your subtle body. But essentially you lay there, you find a region of your body that's damaged, you take your hand, understanding the fact that this is an energy amplifier, 
right? It takes thought, it increases it by at least, let's say, tenfold. And then when you place it over a region of your body, you can take that thought and better penetrate it into the cells of the body by way of your subtle body, your astral form. So you take your hand, you place it over anything. Let's say you've got a cut on your face. You take your hand, you put it over your face, and for a moment, get comfortable, prop a pillow near you, because you can't be tensing all of the time. For a moment, just pretend as if your hand is literally new skin cells. And imagine your hand forming these skin cells. They're growing very quickly. And then every now and then you switch your attention to your physical hand. You just want to pay attention to what's happening. It might be getting warm. It might be feeling like that temperature, that heat is actually changing to something else. Maybe it feels like the energy itself is that of the energy that new cells would house. So your hand kind of feels like a giant cell, a brand new cell, and it kind of feels like it's multiplying. Not literally, it doesn't physically feel like it's multiplying, but the energy coming off of it no longer feels like heat. You can kind of, you can kind of correlate it to new energy, new born life energy. You, it just feels different, you know? If you pay attention to the cells that you're looking at in your imagination and how they kind of generally feel, the vibe you're getting from them, and you cross-reference those cells to your hand, you'll notice that your hand just feels like one giant cell, very similarly to those cells that you're imagining. And that's a really easy, surefire way of figuring out as to whether or not you are resonating the energy of your hand to the same frequency of the cells in your mind. And if you're imagining these cells, you're more than likely going to be influencing your astral body, your dream body. And so you're imagining that whilst your hand is over the damaged region of your face, and you're just noticing any differences that are happening there. Now, at some point it should feel like the energy from your hand is bleeding into your face, and you might even feel the region of your face that is damaged reacting. You will literally feel the cut reacting. With my scar, the tissue only within the scar started to react in a very strange, electrical, somewhat painful way. And a lot of fasters out there, a lot of people who fast and who, who heal their body, say that pain basically means that your body is healing. Okay, It's a sign that your body is healing. So if you're feeling pain, you're getting close. Don't push your hand to your face to feel pain. Of course, be comfortable. <laughs> Whilst that is happening, just maintain that image in your mind of healing and cellular growth and make sure that your hand never changes frequency. Make sure that you always believe that your hand is a newborn cell. That will make sure that your dream body, or in other words, your astral body, will stay at the right frequency and it will interact with the damaged tissue. Okay? So that's how you'd want to do it. That's what I've been doing for the past two days. I've noticed that it has been working and that the pain is completely switched off. There's a lot to this. So much. And you don't need to know everything about this process for it to work, luckily. Now you know a little bit more. You know about how the astral body is connected to the Reiki, or the Reiki practice, right? And you know about the astral body being a thought form and that's why the imagination is able to affect the subtleties of your anatomy, and you also know about the Catholic body, the genetic template of your physical anatomy. Okay, so now I'm connecting some dots for you, and so your practices should be more refined, more focused. Okay, I'm going to mention one more thing before I close down, and that is Reiki's connection to the placebo effect. Now, the placebo doesn't mean fake. Okay, the placebo just means that through suggestibility, you're having a physical reaction. If I told you that your parents just died in a horrible way and you believed it, let's say I was a stranger, or let's say, let's make it even more suggestible, let's say I was dressed in a police uniform and I came to your door, right? Your body would freak out, adrenaline would pump, you would sweat, you'd get really hot. That's not a fake reaction. Your body's actually doing that. You can see the sweat on your skin, the flushness of your cheeks. That's a real reaction through my suggesting something you've been triggered physically, okay? Placebo doesn't mean fake. Placebo means suggestibility. 
And depending on how open you are to believing, given the situation, will determine how your body reacts. It'd be great if you can just say to somebody, heal yourself. And they're like, okay. They don't question it, and then they just heal their body. But if an alien came down, or if Jesus appeared to you, touched you, and said, you're now healed, what do you think is going to happen there, <laughs> right? You're going to feel like, yeah, I feel better. I feel like I can walk. And things start to happen within your body in the same way that they did when I told you that your parents died. Right? You heal remarkably fast. Now, this happens because when I suggest something to you, your mind imagines it for a split second. It doesn't have to imagine it for a long period of time, neither. Just enough to paint a picture for which for you to then react off of that imagery. Right? So if you know what healing looks like and you believe that you're about to be healed, your body reacts perfectly, well, accordingly. And so the reason as to why that's happening is because your body cannot tell the difference between your imagination and this present moment. Right? If I blindfolded you and I picked you up or took your hand and placed your foot on a chair, and I told you that really you were standing on a stool that was about this wide, right? you would imagine that and freak out. Your body would lock up and you wouldn't know what to do. You're believing in your imagination over the reality of the fact that you're actually on a chair. Or let's go a little further, I put you on a very wide table. Or maybe you're not even off the floor, you know, <laughs> that high. Maybe you're only off the floor about five inches. Yeah. And so this doesn't mean that Reiki is fake. This means that you're basically tapping into this part of your mind that can restore yourself to a natural state of health and or to your detriment make you freak out. Okay. On top of your astral body changing form, actually changing that form to interact with your genetic template and on top of you activating the hand properly, you can heal the body. I'm Ryan J.C. Ryan James Cropper. This has been your potential. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this. And if you're interested in astral projection, I have two courses available on my website. Okay, Those courses are the Astral Projection Starter Kit for those just getting started and the 10-step astral projection conditioning method that I use in order to astral project. You can find that over at ryancropper.com. Speak to you pretty soon. Peace.